Put your hands together, Mr. Joshua Healy. This is a story about life, death, and yoga pants. <laughs> this is a story about making war and peace in all the wrong places. This is a story about me and my man, Cameron. Cam is a skinny six foot five. He wears a black kufi on his head. He is the most amazingly terrible karaoke singer I have ever met. For some go-to reason, his song is John Mellencamp, and yes, it hurts so good. But you couldn't stop Cam from singing, and that's why I love him. And then Cam went to Iraq. And then something exploded outside Fallujah, and he lost the hearing in his right ear. He doesn't like to talk about it, and the truth is, I'm afraid to ask. I don't know what the clinical definition of PTSD is. I just know that when a car backfires, Cam's hand reaches to his hip for a gun that's no longer there. And I've driven him to therapy, I've driven him home from too many bars. I would do anything, anything to have Cam, the loud, real, proudly off-key Cam, back. At least I thought I would. And then he asked me to go with him on a week-long wilderness yoga and relaxation retreat. <laughs> um, the truth is, Cam didn't really ask me He's not the type of dude who just makes requests. He came over to my apartment one day about five years ago and said, Healy, get ready to pack your bags. You and me, we're going on a yoga treat next month. I said, Cam, unexpected? Did you say we're going on a Yoda retreat? Because Cam, just so you know, he's a big Star Wars dude. Uh, he says, no, a yoga retreat. I said, Cam, uh, did you say a uh, yo-yo ma retreat? He is also a big classical music fan. Or at least so I'm hoping at this point. And he says, no, motherfucker. I said, a yoga and relaxation wilderness retreat. My VA counselor said it would help with my stress and violent inclinations. But if you don't have my back, that's cool. Healy. <laughs> yeah, of course I got his back. <clears throat> but a uh, yoga retreat for real? Uh, in the woods? Um, I had been in the Bay for a couple years now. So I knew the basics. I knew my holistic from my homeopathic. I knew my Tai Chi from my Chai Tea. But this, this was too much for my truly authentic self. I can't back out on Cam though, I can't back out. So I say, hey man, if this is what you need, then sign me up. So, uh, yeah, so where are we going, though? We going, like, Santa Cruz, Sonoma. Oh, man, I know the best little cheese shop up in Occidental. He hands me a brochure uh, with a picture of the desert and jagged mountains. <laughs> Say, you're going to love it. We are going to Death Valley. <laughs> Five weeks. And hundreds of miles from civilization later, I'm standing in the middle of the desert, trying to pretend like I know how to set up this tent. 
We're in the heart of Death Valley, camping along a ridge that falls down rapidly to a drop a thousand feet below. I'm staring down at the lowest point in America, lower than sea level, surrounded on all sides by these huge mountains rising like rocky giants out of the earth. I say, yo, this looks like that planet that Luke grew up on in Star Wars. He says, yo, this looks like that planet outside Baghdad, which is obviously the perfect backdrop for a week of yoga and relaxation. With me, Cam, and 10 middle-aged women from Sebastopol. Hey, ladies. Um, and we settle in for our morning vinyasa session led by our yoga teacher, Roxanne. Roxanne is a former Hollywood stunt double turned punk rock yogi. She is tatted up from head to toe and her calves bulge through her yoga pants like the boulders on the nearby cliff. I place my purple mat in the sand and await Roxanne's wisdom. And she says, yoga is like sex. It's physical, it's spiritual. It's the union of mind, body, and soul. And just like making love, don't worry so much about getting the positions just right. Set your intention, listen to your body, and fellas, take your time. Pace yourself. There is no need to rush. Word? Namaste. Roxanne says that since we're in the desert, we're gonna start with 108 sun salutations. She says, whatever is holding you back in life, now is the time to let it go. Release it to the desert. And always, always, always remember to breathe. I can do that. So I start to follow her instructions. And just like Roxanne's metaphor promised, at first, it's a little awkward. Uh, it's a little uncomfortable. But then I start to find my groove. I connect with my purpose. I connect with my hamstrings. And holy shit, mom, I'm doing yoga. I look over at Cam. Wow. Um, if you have ever wondered what it's like to do yoga with military style precision. <laughs> this is it. It is all right angles, crisp formations. I can hear his mental call and response. Downward dog, sir, yes, sir. Upward cobra, sir, yes, sir. Sideways salamander, sun salutations. I stay saluted, everything, son. All right, it's not exactly just like that, you know what I'm saying? But my man is focused, breathing, letting himself, dare I say, be in the moment. Maybe this is working. We're deep in the game now, and I'm out here in the valley feeling all kinds of life. Then, out of nowhere, I hear this loud noise pass over me. Something shadow passes over and it's getting closer. I look up to see an F-15 flying right overhead. It's flying fast and low, zigzagging through the mountain, sleek and beautiful and billion dollar perfect. It must be from one of the Air Force bases nearby. I guess when you're constantly going to war in deserts overseas, what better place to train than your very own desert valley of death? Next to me, Cam is grinding, 
grinding his teeth. He's not breathing so quickly. And he's got this look in his eyes like when the car backfires. We're on what feels like sun salutation one million when another F-15 swoops through the valley. Then another, then another, then another. They're flying in formation above. We're stretching in formation below. They're coming so close, it feels like they're taunting us. I mean, we're the only people out here for miles in any directions. Do they have us in their sights? Where am I? A desert or a drop zone? A valley or a mausoleum? One plane swoops by so, so low, I swear I can see the pilot waving as he goes by. Cam shouts, that's it, that's it. He shoots up, I'm not playing this game anymore. Cam shoots up off his yoga mat, he barrels through the campsite and he heads straight towards the cliff. Something in his voice terrifies me, so I jump up to chase behind him. I rush to find Cam standing at the edge of the cliff with a backpack slung over his shoulder, staring down at the jagged rocks and desert floor a thousand feet below. He turns to face me, eyes blaze red like fire. Healy, you want to know what really happened over there? You want to know how I lost this here and you really want to know? It wasn't Al-Qaeda, it wasn't no IED, it was one of ours. What do you mean? Like friendly fire? Not so friendly to me. We were delivering food to this hospital, this hospital right outside Fallujah. Then out of nowhere, these fighters come and bomb the whole block. Just like that, half the hospital is gone, my right eardrum along with it. The last thing I ever heard on this side was screams. Hundreds of people running and screaming, running and screaming, running. And I don't want to hear it anymore, man. Jeez, I'm so sorry. I can't even imagine, he says. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it anymore. And with that, Cam reaches into his backpack and pulls out what I think at first is a black water bottle. Only when I shield my eyes from the sun do I realize that my oldest friend in the world is holding a gun. Who brings a gun to a yoga retreat? Cam, what the fuck? What the hell are you doing with a gun? He says, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it anymore. I say, Cam, do you hear me? Do you see me? I'm right here. I got you. Whatever you need, please put down the gun. He says, I don't think so. Not today. I mean, we came out here to change it up, right? We came out here to do some fucking yoga. Let's do some fucking yoga. What do you call this one again? What do you call this one, huh? Warrior one, he stretches his arms into a pose and points the gun right at me. Cam, Cam, it's me, dude. It's me, it's Healy, I'm right here. I love you, whatever you need, I got your back. Please put the gun down. He says, what do you call this one? What do you call this one? Warrior two, he stretches his arms into a pose points the gun right at his head. Cam, yo, this isn't funny. This isn't, f I don't like this game, man. I don't know what you're playing. We don't need to do this. I got you, there's tons of people. We got you, whatever you need. I love you, put down the gun. Cam says, what do you call this one? What do you call this one? Warrior three, and just as the last F-15 flies by our eyesight, Cam takes the gun and throws it as hard as he can off the cliff. The dark metal flies up through the air, and for a second, I think it's gonna hit the sun, or heaven, or at least the plane flying by. But gravity always wins in the end, and it falls harmlessly down to the rocks below. Cam raises his arms to the sky, 
and collapses to the sandy earth. I rush to catch him before he can fall. I say, I got you. I got you, man. Please, please, can we now please step away from the edge? Cam takes a breath, takes my shoulder, and together we take a first step back to how it was, to how it could be again. And we start to make our way back to the campsite. Cam looks at me and says, Healy, do we really gotta go do more yoga now? <laughs> and I smile, cause I know I've lost too many friends, students, veterans of wars, foreign and domestic. But Cam is still here with us, more and more every day. A true warrior who started to find his peace right here in the valley of death, the valley of life. Thank you.